States, you drop off some bread, they'll say, where's the meat? Yes, come on. How old is this bread? Yes. Where'd you get this bread from? You could have used this bread to get me a steak. You could have always said that in here. How, how many of y'all like that in your marriage now? Whether it's not like, oh, thank you for the flowers. It's old. Come on now. And so a lot of times when we go back home, we find our biggest rejection. We find our biggest folly. We find ourselves trying to convince someone of our anointing, who we are in God. Listen, you've got to convince folk who know you of what God is doing in you more than you got to convince somebody that don't know you. Y'all ain't saying that to me today. How many of you in here, you did a speech, you did a sermon, and you felt like I didn't even do good. But people say, you are great. But when you went back home and preached as hard as you can preach, taught as hard as you can talk, they say, oh, that's... It's the truth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's the truth. So I want y'all to see this because you're not the only one that's dealing through it with stuff at home. Jesus went back home, uh -huh. and watch this now, uh -huh. and came and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogues, and many said, where did he learn the stuff? Saying, from whence this man knoweth these things? And what wisdom is that he possesses, that such mighty works are being done from his hand? Watch the third verse. Is he not the carpenter? It is. Is he not the son of Mary, the brother of Joseph? You see how people, even when you're anointed, try to bring back who they know you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had somebody yeah, ready to talk to me. Yes. Do you understand what he's saying here? He's saying they first were amazed mm -hmm. that he could teach the way he taught. Mm -hmm. But then somebody said, but that's just the carpenter. That's it. So look at your neighbor, look at your, look at real good and say, neighbor. Neighbor. What's wrong? What's wrong? With carpentry. With carpentry. Sit down. That's what we're gonna preach today. What's wrong with carpentry? <laughs> All right. Now listen, I don't want you guys to get comfortable because we got new seats. And a new car because we can easily take these seats out and go back to the old seats. And, and I know they feel good on your back and on, on your hips and it makes you want to sit down and get comfortable. But I want you to understand something about the body of Christ that we, we, we've moved away from the importance of working for God. Yes. And we've gotten more so in our feelings than in God's will. That's right. That's right. And if you allow me just to talk under the option of the Holy Spirit, we won't be before you long. But I, I want you to see some things that are important. First thing that I want you to see is the problem that's happening in today's church or in today's body of Christ. And the, the problem that I want you to understand is we don't even know who Jesus is. Say it. We've only identified with Jesus one way. Listen, uh, the, 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 the Muslims are saying uh, we identify with Jesus as simply a great prophet. Uh, the Buddhists are saying that Jesus, yes, he was a great, he was a great leader, but far as being the son of God, uh, what is God anyway? We are our own individual gods. And and then the atheists are saying, well, there is no God, so then there is no Jesus. Maybe he was just somebody that walked on the earth and just inspired people to live right. And even in the church today, we find our, our way of thinking is, is, is somewhat a little distorted because we only see Jesus in one way. All right, all right. I'm, I'm going to show you. We, we, we see Jesus just as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We, we see Jesus as simply royalty. And because we see Jesus as simply royalty, now we see ourselves as simply sons and daughters of a king. Now, now, I got to blow your mind. They got to make you upset. They make you make happy. Now, now, there's nothing wrong with seeing yourself as royalty. There's nothing wrong with seeing Jesus as as king of kings and lord of lords. But in his ministry on earth, Jesus didn't spend no time as a king. Come on, I know he did. But he spent his time as a carpenter. Yes, he did. Come on. What, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? I, I've gotten comfortable in church. I've gotten comfortable in coming behind the four walls and having a good time in church. But when I leave church, there is no carpentry. Come on. I'm still a king. I want you to see this because uh, if you have a one-dimensional approach to who Jesus is, you'll never grasp the fullness of who Jesus is. And even though you're inspired by great teachings and great outpourings of the Holy Spirit and great conferences, you still will miss the importance of who Jesus really is in your life. You, you, see, you see, the decision 
that, that we have to understand today is a decision that, that Socrates or Socrates wanted us to understand in 430 B.C. to 415 B.C. when he was teaching Plato and he was teaching Aristotle. He said, listen, I understand everything you are saying. I understand that your grandmama instilled in you great instructions and great moral values. I understand where you've come from and I understand that you are assigned to a certain sector of town. I understand that you have a particular race and you have influence and you have society. I understand all of that which you're coming from. But if that's the only thing that's shaping your mind, you don't know nothing. Come on now. Amen. Say it. If all you know is what you've seen on TV and somebody's told you from the mouth, Socrates is saying, you really don't know yourself. Preach. If all you see Jesus is, is as a king of kings and a lord of lords, you really don't know him. Because I understand this, kings and king of kings and queens don't have to do anything. All right. Come on now. They let folks serve them, yeah. but they don't serve folks. But Jesus said, listen, I come that I might not be served, but that I can do the serving. Yeah. In other words, I need you to That's see right. me as a carpenter. I'm not coming to take, I'm coming to give. Oh, yeah. I wish I had some prayer for you here today. Because when we start isolating ourselves, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we start saying, wait a minute, it's their job to serve me. I don't have to do nothing, church. I don't have to do anything. I just need to show up. But I want to talk to somebody today that the day is your day that you decide, I got to build something. Come on, man. Thank you, See, if you're not a builder, then watch this. You may have wrote down and put on a piece of paper, I want God to build my marriage. But if you're not a builder, then you don't want your husband and your wife to do all the building Preach. while you just do all the sitting. Y'all ain't getting any here on this side. Let me go on this side. When you are a builder, then you're not thinking about what folk can do for me, but what can I do for someone else? Come on, right. uh, said, do, do you know yourself? And, and see, here's the reality about it, uh, Sister Mika. There was a time when we knew who Jesus was, not just as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because, you know, the, the mega mindset today is preach folk happy, preach folk finances. But understand, if we don't know Jesus, then we don't understand the importance of his suffering. Right. And if we don't understand the importance of his suffering, then guess what? You won't show up at church because you're offended. Come on now. When Jesus was on the cross being offended and saying, you know what, Father, forgive them for they know what they do. In other words, I got an assignment that folk can't block in my life. I've got something I've got to do. Regardless of what they say about me, I got something I got to do. Yes. And if you are part of this ministry, then you're saying, God has given me something to do. So tell your neighbor, they build something. Build, 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 build. Tell them, tell them, not build. You got to you gotta build in this season. Quit having excuses why you can't. I gotta show you something, watch now. Because if we only see Jesus in one dimension, then we deny the full power that he operates in. If you only see Jesus as the king, then you're sitting there saying, Jesus is gonna do everything for me. And I don't have to do anything for anyone else. How many of us have locked ourselves in our kingdom? I don't hear nobody over here. How many of us have locked ourselves in a kingdom? What does that mean, like ourselves in a kingdom? A, uh, a kingdom? It's all about you now and less about Jesus' agenda being done in the earth. And so if you don't feel like doing a thing, guess what? You ain't going to do a thing. But I wish I had some about five people in here today that even when you did not feel like doing it, your assignment said, I got to do it anyway. Yeah. I'm building something that's not about me, but it's all about let me help you. We all get frustrated in ministry. Amen. Being a pastor, I get frustrated in ministry. Amen. But when you are attracted to the nature of Jesus, your assignment starts talking louder than your aggravation. I wish I had about five people say I'm building this season. Yes. I, I'm building this. Here's the thing I understand about it. Have you ever seen the consistency and the commitment of a builder? That when we're riding by these skyscrapers, when we're riding by these roads, it's hot as I don't know what outside. Yes. We're riding by saying, I don't understand how they can do it, but that man still holding that side. Yes, yes. They say, slow. Come on. Go. Come on. That's all right. right. You're right. Can I get some help? Yes. How is it that in a hundred, and something to grieve whether he's still committed to giving instructions to me in a car with an air conditioner on saying it's hot outside. Why? Because when you understand what your assignment is, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. 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 
it. Tell you that he gonna preach today. I feel it. I feel it. Listen, the man with the sign is not jealous of the man holding the bulldozer. The man with the sign is not jealous of the man laying the top. He said he got the sign and I got the sign, but all the sign has come together for the completion of. Yeah. Yeah. You can't allow yourself to get offended, baby. Right. This season, you gotta work. You gotta work. Come on now. That's it. Jesus. That's it. Man on the side will say, listen, I'm upset. I ain't doing nothing. No, but even when he wiped his sweat off, he still, still. turned that side. And this has, a, has another thing that I, 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 I didn't understand. It's nighttime. And you out there still laying mm -hmm. road. How is it that even at nighttime, when everybody else is complaining yes. about the traffic being bagged up, you still out there, you hear them talking about you. You hear them getting upset every time you say stop, <laughs> and they looking at their watch, and they say, huh, and they, you, you hear all of Come this. On. And in spite of hearing all of this, you don't fuss with nobody, you still turn your side. Yes. Tell your baby, you gotta learn to stay in position. Even when you're hearing what they say. Alright. See, some of y'all break under the pressure of what folks say. Can I help somebody here real quick? There's 66 books in the Bible, baby. I ain't gotta preach on you. I'm preaching on him. If it hits you, say thank you, Lord. You got to It's hot, but it's still serving. Yes. You know why? He's serving with that sign. Brother Joe, he got that sign. And he frustrated because it's hot outside. And the supervisor won't let him wear no shorts or a tank top. He got jeans on, a boot, long sleeves on, and a vest on, and you give me a hard helmet. Y'all ain't saying nothing to hear that. But I'll hold that sign. Why? Because it's my assignment to stay right here until God promotes me. To yes. Come on, come on. yes. Can, can I help you real quick? Help us, Pastor. Because if all you see is royalty, mm -hmm. then you'll sit back with your cute self watching somebody else. Hey. Hold a sign that you need to be yeah, holding. Yeah. If you only see yourself as a king, then you'll understand it's about me and not about God's glory. But I want to talk to about 15 people in here today that say it's not about me, but it's all about God getting the glory from yeah. my life. Yeah. 